Tesla Powerwalls, up until about a week ago, you could only get the Powerwall 2 in Australia. Well, now you can get the Powerwall 3. The Powerwall 3 is actually an improvement. And now Tesla also have a feature on their charging app. You can charge only on solar. So two good things coming here at once from Tesla. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Fantastic to have you with us. Let's have a big thank you to our Patreon supporters and also YouTube members. And also I want to say um, a thank you to the company that installed my, my solar. Speaking of powering your EV on solar, that's what I'll be doing. Um, and when my solar is actually finally connected, my electricity company has been an absolute nightmare. Energy Australia, don't use them, they suck. I just had to pay $600 to get a smart meter installed. Anyway, soon sooner my solar will be connected and it's, and it's a big solar system. It will definitely have more than enough power to charge my EV, which is amazing. If you want to get a new solar system on your house and you live in Australia, the best company I found from doing review searches and looking at everyone, looking at all the different reviews was Resync Solar. I'll put a link in the description to Resync. And if you click that link, they will give you a bit of a discount on your solar system. Tesla Powerwall 3 is here. If you use that in conjunction with your solar system, you can, of course, charge your car for free and charge your house for free. The next generation of Tesla home battery storage, which is a lithium ion phosphate cells. I believe those battery cells are from CATL. So LFP cells will give you approximately twice as many charges, depending on the manufacturer, but approximately twice as many, meaning the Powerwall 3 will definitely last longer than previous Powerwalls. The price, well, Powerwall 3 is actually pretty cheap. It's only $11,900, including an integrated inverter. Added to this price, though, is a $1,700 backup gateway 2, which is a compulsory addition. Tesla calls this the brains of the battery that comes in the form of an extra box. So actually, the, the price is a bit higher than that. Now, of course, if you bought two Tesla Powerwalls, well, the price comes down a bit. But anyhow, $12,000 plus $1,700, so about $13,700 in total, including the brains. This is why people don't really buy CATL um, batteries. Even though CATL is the biggest battery company in the world, they make the best batteries, it's the software, it's the brains, it's the inverters, it's all the other, all the other computer electronics that actually make up uh, the, potentially what you're getting really, you know, is a lot more to it. Plus the app, Tesla's app is pretty damn good as well. The total cost of a Powerwall therefore is, like I said, $13,600 plus the cost of installation. That means it's actually $700 more expensive than Powerwall 2, 700 Australian dollars. But it's better, it's definitely better value. One step off the grid says that the Powerwall 3 makes its biggest departure from Powerwall 2 by being including a fully integrated solar string inverter. The integrated inverter means that the Powerwall 3 is best suited to customers starting from scratch with a home energy system, but contrary to previous reports, it does not make it incompatible with other inverters. A lot of people are saying the Powerwall 3 with this new integrated inverter, not compatible with other inverters. If you've already got a system, don't get it. That's not true. That's just, in fact, that's nonsense. The Powerwall 3 does support AC coupling for those wanting to add a battery to an existing solar system. However, the existing inverter is going to be redundant. Not that that really matters. It just means you've got something there that you won't be using anymore. A Powerwall 3 battery can't, though, be added to existing Powerwall 2 systems. So if this is, this is the one kind of bugbear, one issue, you could say, um, yeah, if you've already got a Powerwall 2, you can't just slap a Powerwall 3 next to it and connect the two together. So there are some pretty good things about the Powerwall 3. One, like I said, it's LFP, so lithium ion phosphate chemistry. And I mentioned this, I believe, more than a year ago. Um, for some reason, other people thought this was irrelevant, but I think this is relevant. It will last longer and it's less likely to be overheat and have any kind of battery fire, for example. I think those two things are pretty important. According to the specs, the Powerwall 3 can accommodate up to 20 kilowatt of solar. I have a 26 kilowatt system, so yeah, it doesn't use all of that. But anyhow, it has a maximum continual charge power of five kilowatt and a nominal output of five kilowatt as well. Now, obviously you can change that if you get multiple Powerwalls. The biggest issue though, or the biggest positive with the Powerwall is that you can more than double the power output of the Powerwall 2, 
with a maximum continuous output of 11.4 kilowatt when you need. That's a huge game changer. So being able to put out 11.4 kilowatt of power, that, that could mean you keep the lights on, you keep everything going in your house. You don't have to like, you know, say, well, what can we turn on? What can we turn off? What do we have to decide we don't want to have right now? That is a pretty big advantage versus Powerwall 2. This, along with a maximum load start capability of 185 amps, means it can power pretty much all appliances in your house when there is a blackout. Tesla says the inverter can output 10 kilowatt, but actually it's slightly more than that. And Tesla also, that depends on local conditions. The te well, Tesla says this as well, guys. Important to realize this. The qualities of home battery backup are measured on their mix of power and duration. Powerwall 3 trumps most other offerings on power. The duration will vary greatly for customers depending on the loads you're trying to support. So it depends on you know, how much electricity your aircon, your air conditioning system actually uses. Now, aside from the fact that Tesla now have on their app the ability to charge only by solar, so um, basically the app can determine when you're getting uh, potentially sending solar into the grid. You don't really want to do that because it's much, much more economically useful for you to simply power your EV, um, charge your EV using solar. So the Tesla app can do that now. But in 2025, so next year, a really cool feature is coming. Tesla say that in 2025, they'll have a feature called Power 3 Expansions. They can essentially add longer backup duration to a Powerwall Battery 3 without the need for additional supporting gear or approvals. That's a big change. So that means you'll have extra Powerwalls and you don't have to do go into all this um, nightmare with you've got to get it approved by the energy services, basically by regulators. It's a very easy solution to add energy storage as people go through the electrification journey, said Tesla. Tesla says the additional unit will look similar to a Powerwall 3, but slightly slimmer and can be installed either side by side with the battery or stacked behind it. That means, guys, next year, you can don't buy a second Powerwall 3. So if you want to buy multiple Powerwalls now, just wait till next year. You can buy one now. Then next year, you could get your second Powerwall 3, which will be cheaper because it won't have all the extra stuff. So it'll be smaller unit and like I said, cheaper price. So if you want to get two power walls or three power walls, that's the thing, don't do that now. Simply buy one power wall, next year you can add this new, well, what will be a new slimmer battery to your system. And it'll be, like I said, more affordable. Now, a lot of people think, guys, a lot of people think batteries don't make financial sense. And I've heard this argument from a lot of people right now. They still they say they're still too expensive. Your payback takes too long. Now, that's not true. That is a highly emotional argument that people make. They say black and white, they don't make economic sense. That is, sorry, but that is ridiculous because they do. They can, depending on your situation. Now, if you're in a situation where you have 26 kilowatt solar system like I do, if you have an EV you're gonna, play, you're gonna charge with your solar panels on your roof, and therefore this, you, know, you might use this to charge your EV at nighttime, you're not home during the daytime, for example. Let's say you're not home during the day. So basically you're using your excess solar you generate, putting it into your battery, you get home at night, put that into your Tesla car or into your other EV, then it makes, you're gonna pay it off much quicker than all these so-called claims that you're not. It's gonna take you 30 years to pay it off, all that kind of stuff. The other thing is, people are not considering virtual power plants. In some places in Australia now, you can sign up to become part of a virtual power plant. Then you can get a much, much higher return on your investment. You're not getting five or 10 cents per kilowatt hour that you put it back into the grid from your solar panels. You're getting a lot more than that. And during blackouts or times when um, the grid needs your battery, you'll get paid a lot of money, huge figures during those, those periods of time, potentially even a couple of dollars per kilowatt hour. And then you can, you'll find that you'll actually pay your power off, power wall off much quicker. So that argument is not no, by net batteries don't make sense. It's more a matter of contextual. Do you have EVs? Do you have, you know, do you work during the day, etc., etc.? It really depends on your personal situation. For many people, actually, it does make sense. For some people, they don't make sense. Further savings, Tesla can be unlocked, say they say through time-based control mode, which allows owners of a time of use electricity plan to set their battery to maximize your savings. Meaning, guys, you know, between six and nine PM in the evenings, you use your battery. You don't use the grid, right? That's when electricity is crazy expensive here in Australia. 
So that's when your Powerwall will actually start to add up and give you some savings as well. When the Powerwall 3 is connected to a virtual power plant though, Tesla says an Australian solar household can save up to 77% a year on their electricity bills. Now, I'm not sure where that number comes from. And of course, that will depend on your situation, your solar, etc. Now, another app feature called Stormwatch will automatically change the Powerwall 3 or charge the Powerwall 3 to its maximum possible capacity to prepare for an outage. So Tesla's app, um, it obviously tracks the weather in your location. And if it sees that a storm's coming, it'll charge the battery up to 100% to get you ready in case you know the grid goes down. The final specs worth mentioning are a solar to battery to home grid efficiency of a pretty staggering 89% and a warranty of 10 years from Tesla. There are a lot of battery companies now in various countries around the world that offer warranties. Whether or not that battery company will still be around in 10 years or five years, well, we know that there's a good chance they won't be. The new battery's dimensions are 1,105 millimeters by 609 by 193. It weighs 130 kilograms. You can mount it to the wall. Um, you can put it on the floor. Various options. Is it worth buying a Powerwall 3? Surprisingly, here in Newcastle, not many people buy Tesla Powerwalls. They buy alternatives from other companies. I actually think the Powerwall 3 is your best option right now in the market, but I, guys, may be about to make a choice and install a different battery from a different company for reasons that I'll explain in a new video. So yeah, that's gonna be here to support my, my solar system. I'll explain why I'm gonna do that. But for most people, I think the Powerwall 3 is your best option, particularly considering in the future, you'll be able to add additional panels for a lower price. So adding an extra system, which you may choose to do. It's actually much more simple and more cost effective. And the other thing is, if you've got a Tesla electric car, well, the Powerwall 3 is actually gonna be a really good to have everything integrated. Use the Tesla app, use the Tesla Powerwall, use the, use the Tesla EV, and sort of have this whole integrated system. That really makes sense for a lot of owners. Let me know what you think though in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.